How's it going, people? Well, still reading from uh, this pamphlet on the true meaning of jihad and Islam and other faiths. The Quran states unequivocally, there is no compulsion in religion. Yeah, well, you can say that. That's not true. Truth stands out clearly from falsehood. And there was nothing but falsehood in the first statement. There is no compulsion in religion. It was a blanket statement, first of all. That's where this author went wrong. Because I grew up in a religious setting, and it was very much compulsory. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'll tell you. Yeah, and this is from the religion that says you must pray five times a day. I'm not sure if that's because the believer needs that or the Almighty does. I suspect he don't need anything from us. But this is where I find out maybe otherwise, huh? Oh, anyway, that was Surah 2, 200, verse 256. So, there you go. Freedom of conscience is a sin is an essential tenet of islam truth can only be seen if it is not clouded by coercion well maybe that's what's been going wrong so much these days people are doing it wrong they're becoming coercive i mean look at the damn taliban or better yet Ugh. although hey they're lightening up you know because yeah, everyone's paying attention to them. But I mean, yeah, they used to pull out, you know, measure your beard and go up. Oh, horse whip that guy in the street in front of his family. His beard, he trimmed his beard. Oh, you're wearing mixed fabrics. Oh, your woman is walking around dressed up like a beehive, a you know, beekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Alright. Yeah, yeah, coercion is bad, especially religious co coercion. Like I said, my earliest experiences are of that. You know, being told that somebody else in the congregation's kid is younger than me and has gone up in front of everybody already. Why can't I hurry up and do that? Just fake it. You'll believe it eventually. Just claim you do now when you don't. Yeah, lots of coercion in religion. Can't say much for Islam since I've never been one. I, I had some curiosity about it though, and uh, I've done a little study, and uh, I've been enjoying the comments from Muslims. You know, most of them have been pretty polite, although I was told that I'll be put on blast if I rude about this subject by one commenter. And uh, hey, blast away, it's fine. Straighten me out if I'm wrong. Cool. I take it. I'm a big boy. As such, protection of the rights of non-Muslims is an important part of Islamic law. You gotta make it a law. History provides many examples of Muslims' respect towards other faiths. And Sometimes vice versa. Sometimes. You know, we're dealing with people, so anything's possible. Everyone's a little different, you know, even when they're, they try to homogenize them with uh, stuff like this. And the other books. For instance, prior to the Spanish Inquisition, Jews and Christians lived and prospered in Spain for 
centuries under Muslim rule. How did that rule happen, by the way? Uh, it's like an invasion or something. I seem to hear about some moors or something to that effect. And yeah, it was nice that they didn't like completely dominate everybody. You don't want to totally dominate in every way a conquered people. They tend to get pissed off and rise up. You just, yeah, subtle pressure over time. That's what it is. But yeah, yeah, they, they conquered Spain and they tolerated some other people for a while. Before the Crusades. Like I said, there are no good guys in the religion business. As far as I'm Sometimes you stand back and go, Oh boy, they're fighting each other. Sure hope I don't get caught in a crossfire. Yeah, that I don't have a dog in the fight or a god. Mm. Another well known example is when Omar, the second Muslim leader after the Prophet Muhammad, entered Jerusalem. Hmm. What did he do, I wonder? That seems to be the other example we can think of. Uh, he refused to pray inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Is he afraid of selling himself? Is that it? Because, I mean, I've seen how religions respect each other. They conquer a land and they build a temple over another temple. They've been doing it for a long time. He refused to pray inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. He was concerned that some overzealous Muslim in the future might destroy the church and build a mosque in his honor. Oh, that'd be horrible. Prophet Muhammad is reported to have said, Beware on the day of judgment. I shall myself be the accuser against him who wrongs a non-Muslim citizen, principles in a Muslim state, in principles, or lays on him a responsibility greater than he could bear, or deprives him of anything that belongs to him. Well, that was sick of him. Anyway, and uh, let's see the page I was looking at. You should get appreciate some of these pictures. You'd have to really zoom in, I guess, but they're small already, but pretty. Yeah, darn pretty. Anyway, that's Islam and other faiths. And, um, yeah, I find that, you know, it depends, how they behave depends on the power dynamic of the time. The smaller they are, the nicer they tend to be. I'm all for small religion. You know, I mean, it's, you know, one person at a time, one little community at a time. Just these dumb, dumb, these, these mega churches and mega mosques. Where they're juggling billions all of a sudden and they still don't pay taxes so they can buy their own politicians and then start bossing the rest of us around, which seems to be the aim all along and always has been. Anyway, those are my thoughts on it. But uh, yeah, that was Islam and other faiths. And speak of them being the only true one. <laughs> 